What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Get the Bag podcast. I'm your host, Claudia Castro. I got my co host, Tim Park. What is up? Okay. Happy Monday. I can't believe we're already running into November. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I know. Like, I feel like Thanksgiving's right a corner. Yeah, I feel like it was just January, like two minutes ago. So um, time. Time totally flies, but I'm um, really excited for today. Um, we have an amazing guest on, but before we get started, don't forget to like this video, uh, subscribe. We're on here every week, uh, either sharing uh, knowledge or uh, having amazing guests like today, uh, people in the, not just the real estate industry, but just entrepreneurs, because um, our goal is to just pass on uh, knowledge uh, and hopes to um, gain wealth, right? So uh, without further ado, today's guest, um, she comes with two decades of uh, commercial real estate experience, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, she also has a company, uh, founder of Authentic CRE Solutions. Uh, and during these 20 years, she learned uh, industry leading uh, uh, from industry leading women, uh, while at firms like Grandbridge Real Estate Capital and Walker and Dunlop, uh, Nikki's expertise includes analyzing over ten billion dollars in loans. That's 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 a lot of money. Um, so when you're talking math, calculating things, she's uh she's your girl. Uh, she's also a published writer and active phil phil I can't speak today philanthropist uh, supporting <laughs> causes like Habitat for Humanity and Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Uh, Nikki is also a mother, a passive real estate investor, uh, a Wire member, Women in Real Estate. Shout out to them. Shout um, out. <laughs> and uh, advocates for diversity and inclusion. Let's welcome Nikki Perez to the Get the Bag podcast. What's going on, girl? Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, thanks so much for joining. We were just <clears throat> talking backstage about uh, following up and how life kind of comes up. And I think it's a kind of a great um, sort of a kind of starting point when like stuff happens all the time, but we get mm -hmm. stuff done one way or another. So, um, so glad I was able to get you to join because uh and really kind of learning about um, you a little bit more, especially after we met at the Vegas uh, Wire, uh, found, uh, it was like a golf foundation, uh, which is super, super fun. Uh, I think we all kind of learned some golf, um, a little bit of golf, maybe. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it definitely gave me the golf kind of um, itch afterwards because i think i was hitting up tim uh yep. telling him like hey after. let's 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 get let's get into let's hit up the uh whatever the club let's get our clubs and yep. shoot some balls or hit whatever the, links. the lingo is yeah there well, you, go. you look like a pro i mean you were killing it out there i thought you had experience <laughs> hey i fake it till i make it there you that's, go that's that's, 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 that's do. the line and uh good old top golf i'm good at driving you know hitting the driver but everything else in between it's a uh, it's a work in progress but <laughs> it's super fun uh but i really love hearing about like your background and kind of like what yeah. you do um and but i'm kind of curious because uh, we'll probably go into like your background but kind of going into you starting your your company uh authentic cre solutions what led you to you know 20 years like that's that's a good amount of time like what made you think it was ready to kind of start that and um you know was it kind of your experience in in those 20 years or you're like you know it's time i've gained all the knowledge it's time to kind of create my own empire so to speak yeah that pretty much sums it up um the 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 real aha moment was when i was leaving i, I was driving home from uh beth's beth A's or one of my mentors um uh she's also my career coach um, I was driving home from her women's real estate investment summit event earlier this year, which <clears throat> I spoke on the lender panel, uh, along with Kehlani and Brittany of wire and Patty Goodspeed. And, you know, I'm driving home and, you know, so many pivotal moments flooded my brain and, uh, um, I just sort of had this aha moment and it was out of all of the experiences that I've had over the last 20 years, it was the most meaningful one of, of, of all because 
you know, I realized that my purpose is really to empower those overlooked and underestimated to be authentic, especially mm -hmm. within professional environments, because I know what it feels like to be afraid to be yourself, to be afraid mm -hmm. to ask for what you want, to feel inferior, to feel intimidated. And that's why Authentic CRE's primary focus is to create safe spaces and open dialogues about the overall commercial real estate underwriting process, because I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think there's enough transparency about it. And it's right. fundamentally mm -hmm. designed to help, you know, folks analyze various asset types, explain how lenders will pro forma and burn the gatekeeping bridges down. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, that's a great service that you provide. And I think it's a great company that you provide, especially, you know, um, it's, it's definitely, you know, dealing in commercial and um, the underrepresented is just, it's really non-existent when you get into these bigger, you know, commercial deals and stuff. So um, just understanding, especially on the number side and underwriting and you know, um, getting uh, getting that right to make sure it's a deal or it's going to perform in three to five years or whatever the expectation is on the performer, right? So, I think uh, what you do is just uh, a testament to like uh, what is needed in commercial real estate. So, I commend you on that. That's awesome. Thank you. I think it's also important to um, be confident in yourself. Right. And if you are 100%. afraid to speak up or ask questions because you feel like you're not going to get the right answers or you are um, afraid that someone maybe doesn't have your best interest at heart or maybe you're afraid that you, you know, you're lacking the confidence in yourself. Like, hey, I I'm not smart enough to do this. I don't know about this, whatever the case may be. And if you have someone in your corner championing you on and that confidence comes mm -hmm. out, then I feel like that makes you just more successful in life. You know, we can't be on the back end feeling like we're not good enough for things when we're just as capable as everybody else in the room. Yeah, that's absolutely. A, that's a fact. And I think um, this is why I'm sure you know more than anyone else why are so pivotal, um, especially when, and I think that represents too, like the mission that Kehlani and Brittany uh and still and in, in starting this uh and to see where they're at now because we interviewed them literally like the first year that we did our podcast and they were just mm -hmm. you know we we're just kind of coming out of like the covid cloud so to speak you know clubhouse is kind of popping and um and they were just kind of right in the middle of like refactoring things and to see where they're at now and starting to see them scale it's pretty crazy uh it's, it's amazing awesome. but i think it, it's it's also seeing kind of the the confidence that you're talking about that that they get that they bring off um and encourage uh other women and i'm sure like having a kaylani or Brittany in, in your uh, your corner so to speak has probably really trickled and inspired you uh like many other women to kind of stop and think and be like Am I really happy in what I'm doing right now? Or I, I feel like I can make a difference. So uh, I guess my question is, how have your mentors um, impacted your approach to real estate? And uh, what, what sort of lessons have you learned from that that kind of trickled into uh, where you're at right now? Well, first of all, um, joining WIRE was not only career changing, but life changing. Mm -hmm. and um it it was it was probably one of the most significant choices that i made in my career and um that next to hiring beth as my career coach because she, she actually suggested that i join wire mm -hmm. and um you know being around these 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 strong smart you know female mentors has really changed how I, not how I analyze the numbers, but how I approach mm -hmm. people in the industry. That has changed exponentially thanks to all of their influences from, you know, teaching me how to formulate my why uh, to actively mm -hmm. listening and encouraging me to be me 100% of the time, every time. And that last part actually took some practice. Like sure. we would have these, one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, coaching sessions where we'd practice, 
you know, networking and, um, you know, they'd stop me, you know, midpoint and be like, you know, you weren't yourself here. We know you, you, you know, you were the old Nikki, like bring yourself really through. And Mm -hmm. that really, um, I don't know. I, I think that besides my curly hair being my superpower, it ends up turning out that like being myself is my superpower because Mm. the connections and relationships I've built since that realization has only led me to wanting to help people be confident in themselves and their underwriting more than ever. Yeah. I love it. Hey, curly hair gang too. I mean, it's not as tight as yours, but (laughs) but it is, uh, it does kind of add some power, but I I will say, yeah, no, Kaylani, especially Kaylani, We'll yeah. definitely call you out on um, whatever and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. And then sometimes, exactly. you know, people can give or take, can can think of it in a certain way. But I, I see it as like, hey, she's trying to push me to be better. Um, mm-hmm. And I, 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 I see it already, um, even from the, the moment that we that we did meet. It's like you putting yourself out there, even us having this conversation, right? Usually your old you would have been like, oh, nope. Uh, pass on the podcast or pass on this. Um, Sayonara. You know, <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> but to put yourself out there, like I've learned, I need to put myself in as many uncomfortable situations. That's the only way I 100%. know that I'm growing or I'm at least pushing myself is because when we're, we, we stay in the comfort zone, um, we're, we're not growing. How can you grow if you're not moving, you're not doing anything about it? Um, so I definitely commend you on that because I know it's not easy. <laughs> it's not. I mean, but you're right. If 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 we're not uncomfortable, what are we really doing, right? We're, that means that we're mm-hmm. complacent and we're just staying stagnant in where we are. And you know, they, Beth, Kalani, Brittany, you know, they've been particularly inf- influential too in the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset. Like you were, you know, talking mm-hmm. about earlier. I've learned a lot about what it means and what it takes to be an entrepreneur from them. And it's hella scary. Like Mm -hmm. there is no backup plan because you are the plan. And while you think you like, while you think you aren't working for anyone, you are working for someone, your, yourself, your kids, your family, your partners, your clients, those who need you and who you're called upon to serve and the stakes and intentions behind them are so much greater. And watching these women in action has helped put all of that into focus, into perspective. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I just, you know, uh, entrepreneurship, people don't realize is its own beast. And, um, you know, certain people um, are made for that, right? And some people aren't. And that's why we have, you know, people that work for other people and, you know, um, and people that strive they, you know, they have the gig economy or whatever, they're go to gig to gig, but they're not a, like a true entrepreneur running a business and then, you know, getting into uh, systems and stuff. So um, I, I think that's a great point that you make there too. Um, kind of pivoting to like, you know, evaluating and underwriting and getting into that a little bit. Um, I know you have done over like 10 billion um in uh analyzing loans and um people don't realize i guess is the difference (laughs) between residential and commercial is really about the numbers you're not uh evaluating what's sold on the market you know uh like a residential house you're you're analyzing profit and loss and expenses and what's going to be profitable for that asset class um so can you can uh, kind of describe that process and how that works as well? Sure. Um, to kind of sum it all up, my process is really grounded in knowing your why and your NOI. And mm-hmm. I break that concept right. down into three pillars, which is pro forma, purpose, and, per- and person. So what do mm-hmm. I mean by that? So the first pillar is pro forma, right? And you ask yourself these questions. What is the income structure, expense ratio, operating trends? How am I valuing this? What is the LTV, the debt yield, the debt service coverage ratio, right? How do the numbers and loan metrics compare to the market? Do they fit a lender appetite? Because lenders have specific boxes, right? That they fit themselves in, their their own investment criteria, what they're willing to lend on. How does that all fit into their their lender appetite? Um, The second one is purpose, right? 
who do you want to be as as an investor? What type of asset classes do you want to focus on? Is that aligned with your um, your 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 why, right? Your business purpose, like who you are in this world, you know. And then there's also the more kind of um, technical thing, like what is the financing request? Is it a refinance? Mm -hmm. Is it an acquisition, a bridge loan, a development project? What is the asset type, the business plan, the desired loan terms? What are your investment targets? Those are all the things to think about, or at least when I think about when I'm looking at the purpose. And then the last one is person. You know, what is the structure of the borrowing entity? Where is the money coming from, right? Who is mm -hmm. it flowing through and from and where, where does it go? Uh, what's the structure of that? You know, who are the KPs, the key principals, the guarantors? What is their experience, their real estate owned, their net worth, liquidity, market share? Who is the property manager? Is there one? So, you know, thinking about it and summarizing it that way, uh, uh, pro forma purpose in person is really how I, I pretty much evaluate my loans. That's awesome. Yeah. I love you that. just dropped like so many bars. Like, people people <laughs> probably don't even know all the acronyms that you just dropped, which, you know, we don't have to break it down, but uh, definitely reach out to Nikki if, <laughs> you know, you're looking uh, to underwrite. Because I know at least for us, right, we do very basic underwriting, like, if we're considering like wholesaling, for example, like commercial. So we get a lot of commercial deals that come our way, multifamily, you know, it can be whatever type of asset class. So we understand like, okay, we need the P&Ls, what are the, um, what's the, what are the expenses? Uh, you know, typically, obviously multifamily, we're, we're considering property management fees, taxes, all these things. So we do very basic, but um, you probably, you know, because these larger real estate companies, they, they actually hire underwriters, right? So that's kind of like what you were doing versus us who are like doing our best, right? To like kind of do it quick because the, the quicker you can return back and, and get, uh, get an offer in or, you know, try to ensure that it works um, the better. But is there any advice for people starting off, whether it's like investment investors who maybe can't afford to hire an underwriter or, or whatnot, what are some like simple things to, I guess, get started and if they want to underwrite a deal or maybe you don't recommend that? <laughs> no, I mean, I think that, well, number one, you can talk to me, right? Um, and, and I can walk you through like quick processes. I also have, you know, um, templates already like ready to go for different asset classes that are really simple to follow. But I mean, a simple pro forma, if you can, you know, you know, gather your due diligence and at the very least, like, let's say we're talking about multifamily, at the very least, you should be able to get a rent roll, um, an mm -hmm. operating statement, right. right, a current operating statement. And you can you can get to your NOI, right, from from those yeah. numbers, you can even do a quick back of the napkin, right, yep. scenario yeah. if you wanted to. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, uh, to get started, I would definitely make sure that, you know, you have the due diligence that you need to get to your NOI because it's the most important metric. And then from there, you can figure out like, you know, the other stuff, you know, who do I need to talk to to understand what kind of loan I can get? Do I even want it? Am I going to go seller financing route, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a process, but I mean, you can do quicker back of the napkin um, analyses to get to the answer quicker. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a right answer. Basically, don't overthink it, but just check your boxes and hit up Nikki. Uh, basically, that's, <laughs> that's what I got out of it. <laughs> exactly. And for, uh, for the people that don't know what NOI is, net operating income. So that's when you get your gross revenue and you subtract your expenses and that's your NOI. That's your cash flow, basically, or yep. what you'll be getting. That's mm -hmm. it. Yep. It drives everything. <laughs> it is. Cash, That's cash when you can tell how much money. real money they're making, you know, so yep. and see if it is a deal or not. Um, but I think, uh, you know, because I'm really passionate about like commercial and um, I like running the numbers and I love different asset classes as well. And I know Claudia, Claudia and I are uh, focused on multifamily. So, but we also um, in the future want to develop maybe affordable housing or get into development as well too. So that's that's kind of a you know goal of ours um, collectively. So, uh, but you know we we have to take certain steps. So 
because there's, you know, of course, investor money, GP money, LP money on bigger deals. And then there's debt money as well, too. So um, that goes all into evaluating and underwriting the deals. And that's when we call Nikki and say, hey, this is we got a deal. This is what we're looking at. We possibly got a DP in this. This is their experience. This is the debt that we're looking to have. Is this possible to do in this multifamily? Is that correct? Is that how we would approach it for you? Yeah, pretty much. I actually just um, uh, uh, finished an underwriting for a client that they were developing a 75 unit multifamily project in California. Mm. And it was basically exactly that. And the only thing that they actually sent me was their underwriting model. And I broke it down, you know, put it out into mine. And, you know, I, 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 you know, it was a construction deal. So it was a little bit of a heavier lift, right? With the construction mm. cash flow and sure. um, doing an absorption schedule, right? Like figuring out when the pro from the property CEOs to when it becomes stabilized and you're actually getting in that stabilized cash flow. What does that look like too? Um, but they told me what they, <clears throat> what they were targeting in terms of, you know, their debt financing, they were, they were, they told me what they were targeting in their, um, investment metrics, right? What the GP was allocated to and what the LP was allocated to into their waterfall. And it was my job to make sure that the numbers worked and that we were hitting mm -hmm. those targets and we did. So, yeah. That's awesome. Love it. I, I, um, I did want to kind of go back to real, real life. I mean, you mentioned motherhood, um, and I think this is something that I'm sure many uh, members in WIRE and we've also experienced it too in our wholesaling communities, like being women, and, but mothers, um, wives, uh, partners and whatnot, and also like entrepreneurs, like how have you balanced that out um, along with like everything else? Like you're, you're a writer, you're also in, like involved in your mm -hmm. community. Uh, Cause I, I feel like there's sometimes guilt too with a lot of women. I think that also kind of, affects their confidence going into you know starting a business or not not understanding their their worth so how have you kind of uh evolved i guess so to speak in your 20 plus year career uh the truth is that i don't have it all figured out and mm -hmm. i'm I'm learning every day and I'm changing every day and I'm pivoting every day. And, mm -hmm. you know, what worked for me and Zaire, my son, um, you know, two weeks ago, probably even looks different today. Right. And right. Um, it's it's always an evolving process <clears throat> for me as a mom, too, because as my son grows and changes, I'm growing and changing with him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also, I almost have to, you know, relearn him while I'm relearning myself. And that, you know, dovetailing with diving into entrepreneurship has been challenging. And yeah. uh, also, you know, my, I, 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 I'm going through a divorce this year. I resigned from my nine to five. And, you know, so a lot of really important, um, transition periods for me this year in particular and i am just doing the best i can and one thing that really mm -hmm. helps is having a routine if i don't have a routine then um things kind of get out of whack for me and the best way i can balance everything out is having that routine you know getting my day started right following that routine and just going through it and to be honest, a clean house. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, <laughs> but you know, I'm really big on energy and having a clean house is, is yeah. one way for me to balance my life and my energy. And it's the same with everything else, right? You know, you clear out your space, you feng shui it, and, and you know, it, it, the routine keeps me grounded. The, the cleanliness keeps me grounded. It keeps my brain clear and everything like that. And my balancing act isn't quite a, a finesse as I'd like it to be, but I do my best and that's all I can do. Uh, I think there's no yeah. right or wrong answer. I think when yeah. any, anything like that, I always love to ask um, parents, especially mothers, because 
uh, as I mentioned earlier, as women, we put all that pressure on ourselves, like we have to be perfect, or we have to do this for our kid. And we, you know, I, I don't have kids personally, but like, you know, I just feel like sometimes adding that pressure affects how we move and the decisions we make. And you should, if anybody, if anything, you should be doing it for yourself first, because if, if you're good, then, you know, everyone else around you is good. Um, but I love what, what you said, where it's like, mm -hmm. hey, some, what, what I was, what was working two weeks ago may, may be different because your son, he's, he's growing, you know I mean? Like he's mm -hmm. uh, naturally growing. And so, like, like we said, we, we, we should be as uncomfortable as possible because that's, that's where we learn. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's why it's also important having the support that you have at wire or anybody else mm -hmm. in these relationships. Cause uh, I too, like, you know, it's been a really rough year as well, like kind of personally in, in dealing with a, a lot and also transitioning and moving. And, um, you know, although it's, it's, um, I'm, I'm very easily, uh, you know, I adjust to things very quickly. Um, you know, I, 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 I uh, what's, what's the word where I acclimate really easily. Mm -hmm. uh, to new environments, but sometimes it takes an adjustment. So I think uh, mm -hmm. I love that you said having a routine is so is so uh, so important because you have to find some. I, I don't I don't think you sh your entire day or life should just be um, super disciplined or structured. But you need some form of a structure in your life to like make yourself not go crazy. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I love that you have that. Because once once you're good, once you have that structure, you like everything else can pan out. It's like one step at a time uh, instead of just kind of letting everything take over you. So, uh, I I love um, your your response to that. Thank you. <laughs> I love your questions. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. <laughs> no, I, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, you know, I know that we're kind of winding down here, but I wanted to ask if um, what are some things you plan on doing um with your business in the future what's your kind of goals for your business um in the next you know couple months or next uh, couple years kind of long term as well too so just uh leave us with that and anything you want to leave some of a guest you know our guests who are watching this today like or later on um what you'd like to leave them with um, so for authentic CRE, I mean, <clears throat> I just launched, right? I'm still processing yeah. everything. <laughs> like I you still can't believe it's happening, but it's time. actually happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think for right now, the overarching goal is for, you know, the company to, to collaborate and partner with as many individuals as possible who need and want to learn about underwriting commercial real estate and empower empower them with the skills to make those informed decisions about their investments and and, and give them that confidence to do that um for future tense uh we are actually very aligned because my hope is to form partnerships with uh uh, uh businesses and firms that focus on building affordable uh multifamily mm. projects so it was really okay. awesome. it looks like we'll do there so we like, oh. we're manifesting some something yeah something's happening 100 100 we are i love it i love it i love it and i guess the only i don't know i guess the only thing that i can really say to everybody else is that you know if you want to if you want to invest if you want to get into commercial real estate if you want to get into you know fix and flips whatever the case may be you know time is more valuable than money you know you can get more money but you cannot get more time so mm, right. you know believe in yourself uh, form a criteria for yourself and if all the checks is you know you know if all the boxes check do it now don't wait boom I love that. We'll we'll end My it there. God. Nikki, thank you so much uh for joining in. It wasn't that bad, right? Yeah. Not at all. And I can't believe cool. my phone is going off right now. I thought I put it on side. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, um, okay. uh but no, this was amazing. Thank you both for having me so much and and giving me the opportunity to do this with you all. I loved it. Thank you. Awesome. Oh. I think Gladia like I went, there you go. Like I went, you uh, my AirPods died. Um, but, <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, 
but no, thanks again. It was super, super insightful to kind of see uh, where you're at. Good luck with, uh, you know, your endeavors. I'd love to check in and they, mm -hmm. in a year, do a one year okay. check in. You'll be, t you'll be so, uh, so busy. Hopefully you have some time for us, but, um, but thank you so much for coming on. And um, I need to get more involved in, in wire for sure. So I need to tap into more meetings. So I'll definitely be uh, involved a bit more, but uh, I just moved to Florida too. So we'll have to connect sometime. What? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's where, that's where yeah. 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 That's yeah. offline. Uh, we'll have to have to connect for that, but um, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But uh Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. If you want to reach out to Nikki, I believe I have uh, her links uh, down below in the description. So make sure you reach out to her for your underwriting needs. Uh, but uh, we'll catch you guys next week. We have another amazing guest uh, as well. But I uh, hope you have an amazing week. See you all then. All right. Peace.